So we have a static can. Let's uh, let's get this thing animating. Uh, first thing we have to do is uh, let's open up the action editor again. So bring up the dope sheet and turn this into the action editor. You can see we have idle in here, and idle just sits there. It's only one keyframe. But let's say we want this to give you health or give you armor or give you ammo so you have a soda launcher or something you know uh, kind of turn it into a quake style pickup so it spins and it'll float you know just be interesting um, we're gonna make another animation for that so click the little plus button and we will rename this spin um, we are still in pose mode so we can bring up keyframe one and let's uh, hit all to select, so A, and then X will delete the keyframe. We're going to make it float about a unit off the ground. So we're going to make this the first keyframe. So hit I and go location, rotation. And now we're going to go about 50 frames out, and we're going to make it spin oh, 360 degrees in that 50 frames. So come to your bone and rotation mode. I believe the default is quaternion W X Y Z, and we want to change that to Z Y X Euler. And we want this final rotation to be 360 degrees. So hit I on that 50, and then go back to our first one and make sure this is zero degrees. And it's important to know that when you're setting those keyframes, you want to be in this 3D view before you hit I, or else the rotations you set will not take place. So then we hit the play button, we can see our animation, but it's kind of it's kind of stopping at that 50 frames. Uh, this is because Blender automatically puts accelerations and decelerations into the movements. Um, it's great for regular animating, but to make a constant rotation, we don't want that. So we can fix that by going into the curve sheet. So bring up another window, and we will change this to the graph editor. So now you can see there's a graph over here. So we can bring this scale up, and bring this out. And we can see that that curve is coming, accelerates over here, it's linear in the middle, and then it decelerates towards the top. We could fix that by grabbing these endpoints and dragging them straight through to the other side to make it a linear adjustment. Now if you're going to click on this one, you might not always get the proper graph. See now we can see the green's highlighted. Um, in order to select that, we can drop this down. We can turn off everything we want except for what we want. So now we grab this other handle through that other endpoint, and now it's a constant linear rotation, and there's no acceleration in there. So, this is good. Well, I guess it's spin 001, but that's fine. Now let's export it. Come to our scene, and we need to make sure that implicit motionless bone is unchecked. If this is checked, it just ruins everything. So make sure that's checked. Uh, source export, make sure we have our proper folder. Hit accept. And now export. Export the scene and then export the animation just to make sure. So now we have our can. We already compiled that, so we don't need to change it. All we need to do is take our new animation and copy it into the can model folder. Open up the can QC. And you can see I've already done this before, but just to do it from scratch, here's our idle animation. We want to call this spin. We want to change it to spin.001, because in our anims folder spin.001 is the exported animation name. Frames per second. Um, 
you can see in Blender that when we play this animation, it's 24 frames per second, give or take. I want it to be a little slower than that. I'm going to say 15. 15 frames per second, and it loops. And it's an idle animation. File save. Give this a quick compile. And now we can look in our soda can model we just spit out. Sequences. We have our spin sequence in there. And here it is. You know what? I don't like that. Let's make it float up halfway through. We'll just move it up a little bit. Hit I, location, rotation. So that's a little more visually appealing. Re-export the spin animation. Copy the animations over. Overwrite the old one. And then we can just recompile. And now it floats up and down. And then to view this in game, you can pull up Sledge. Actually, before we do that, let's copy it to the My Models Counter Strike folder location. Now we can pull up Sledge. So we already have our soda can sitting over here inside the clip brush. So let's clone this to the edge of the table. And Cycler Sprites let you choose which animation you're looking at. So in our can QC we can see two sequences here. Uh, this is technically sequence 0 and this is technically sequence 1. So to choose the spin sequence you want to change that to number 1. So model sequence will be 1. In frames per second, you would think to put 15 in here, but you really want to set that to 1. And you'll see why in a second. It's almost like a um, animation multiplier, more so than a frames per second. So compile and run the game. We can see our Jelly Fizz can floating above the table. Okay, so to recap, um, Blender to Gold Source. First, we get the tools Blender, the model viewer, paint.net, the converter, sledge editor, GUI studio model. Install everything. Uh, you're going to need the Blender exporter to SMD. Uh, we learned how to do a quick UV unwrap. We learned how to do a basic texture and how to import a texture into Blender. Uh, we learned how to do a static animation and a dynamic animation using the action editor, the curve sheet, and uh, making sure we don't check that dreaded button that puts the random bone in there and messes up all of our So stuff. the export sequence is pretty simple. Once you have your model textured and animated and saved, make sure to save it. You export it to SMD, you convert the SMD, you reference the SMD, the textures, and the animations inside your QC script, and then you just compile, and then you're good to go. So I hope you all learned a lot watching these videos. Um, it took me a little while to learn all this stuff on my own, um, and uh, if you have any questions, just drop something in the comments, um, and I'll try to answer it as best I can. Thank you guys very much.